I'm uh, Alex Taylor, and I'm from uh, Linton, Indiana. And this is a uh, drag line, a crawler drag line, a Manitowoc 6400. And they're commonly used in, uh, most of them are in Pennsylvania, these specific models. Uh, but drag lines are used in a number of uh, applications, mostly around mining or uh, uh, gravel operations, digging up basically number of materials because they can dig deep and dump high and they've got a good range to work with. So that's what this model is. It is built to uh, 1 to 44 scale, which is basically minifig scale. And you can see by the size of it to the FJ Cruiser how, how large the machine really is. And this isn't even as big as the walking drag lines over there that my friend built. Uh, those are 1 to 200 scale, uh, but those don't operate. This one does. Uh, I've been working on it. I basically started it full on in February, uh, beginning of February. I had the boom done previously. Uh, it's scaled to equivalent of 160 feet. And then the drag line bucket that it digs with would be a uh, 15 cubic yard bucket or uh, 80,000 pounds wow. is what it could is the weight of the bucket and the material. So I used a number of references of photographs. Uh, this is an actual printout of a spec sheet for the uh, machine. So it gives some of the basic dimensions, operational, various photos. So I use these heavily in uh, building the model. And I also have uh, found a mechanical drawing book of the machine. So I uh, stuck it in AutoCAD and basically printed it out to the exact scale that I needed and then used that to build off of. So I've not really kept track of my man hours or, t or pieces. Well, correction, I did start keeping track of the pieces, but with about one week to Brickworld and actually needing to finish it, I decided not to do that. Things got a little crazy there. <laughs> That's right, just bit last minute building. It seems like it, that happens quite a lot for these shows. So, yeah, definitely. This is actually, the very first time I've had it all put together, I uh, reeved the uh, strings to raise the boom up at this show, and uh, so far I'm very happy with the operation. It digs very well. I'm happy with that. Uh, I am still work have some kinks to work out. This is finding some of the weaknesses. So uh, having it set up for the first time, I'm seeing places where uh, some of the gears are separating. So I need to strengthen a lot of the uh, structure there. Um, but overall, real happy with the model, and come Chicago, I expect to have it fully completed with the, uh, the house around the machine. I think it's a great model. It turned out great. And you've got some, some moving parts in here. Can you show us how it works as far as the bucket down here? So uh, basically it uses IR controllers, uh, uses two battery boxes in there, and outputs to four motors. Two of them control the movement of the bucket. Uh, one controls the swinging of the machine left and right uh, and then this one controls the raising and lowering of the boom so basically the main ones that I'm using right now due to my limited workspace are the uh, drag and hoist or I would if I had any motion I have no motion a little bit of a technical difficulty here to get this worked out battery boxes I've not used these before uh, they have six AAA batteries, and I found they have lasted a lot longer than the AA battery box equivalent. And these also shut themselves off after, uh, I don't know, a few hours. Let's see if we can get it working here now. It should work now. So the teeth are angled downwards on the bucket to base to help it penetrate and down into the uh, material. And I love these tile pieces. It's the best thing for digging because any even the one by ones with the stud on them, they uh, kind of interlock with each other. These there's no interlocking. It gets a good scoop, and you don't have to clean it clean your bricks up like with sand. That's awesome. I love how you've got this here kind of demonstrating how it works like that. That's so cool. And yeah, like you said, those little tiles work perfect yeah. for this. Thank you. Thank you. And like I said, limited workspace. I really need like a, a kid's sandbox size. That way I wouldn't have to worry about spilling them outside. 
will this run fairly easily for several hours? You can keep it going for a while, or does it wear out after a while? I have not actually changed the batteries all day, and it's not really exhibited any slowdown either. So I'm very happy with these battery packs. I mean, how all the, the string and everything you've got going here stays fairly strong. Yeah, yeah I used a nylon thread, which doesn't really have the, um, I guess, the stretchiness that you'd expect cotton or yarn to have. So it is, it works very well. The only problem is unraveling at the end because it's got the strands sort of un unwind. So when I'm running the strings, that uh, makes it complicated. I have to keep cutting a little bit off the end and that way it's a, a fresh tip. Although I could, I suppose I could just use a little bit of tape or glue on the end. So what inspired you to do a build like this? How did you get interested in the cranes like this? Well, I like mining machines, big heavy equipment, and uh, cranes are cool, just like the only engineering that goes into it. And so I just wanted to build one. And it worked out that I was able to take a trip. I was heading through uh, Pennsylvania. I have a buddy out there, and he was able to get me a tour of one of the actual coal mines that one of these machines works, works at. So getting an up-close look at the actual machine was really cool as well. Yeah. Well, cranes are pretty cool, so I appreciate you showing that to us. Thank you. It's a really awesome build. Not a problem. Thank you very much.